You're the hero who defeated Alexandra Canal at Vivex Antlers. the last of this. Hey. Some of my own children have betrayed me. I am rarely an angry god, but this time there shall be a reckoning. Rage consumes me. The Moorborn invade my home, they attack my children, they attack me. You have proven yourself loyal and capable. I call upon you to serve me once more. The Moorborn penetrated the temple and opened a portal into oblivion. Even now, Daedra swarm within its hallowed halls. Such sacrilege must not stand. Banish the Daedra that defile our temple. Defeat them, and then make your way to my altar. While you slay their minions, I shall determine what the Moorborn are really up to. Now go, and carry my divine rage with you. You shall hear, though you shall never speak of it. This enemy uses guile and subterfuge. I need time to understand the threat they pose. My divine defenses have been breached, and the temple has been invaded. I cannot be seen to fail. Appearances are everything. They feed opinion and belief, and such matters are important to me. But enough questions. Save the temple, and you will be renowned among mortals and favored by gods. The Moorborn penetrated the temple and opened a portal into a...
I sense the temple is free of the Daedric incursion. We are well pleased. While you fought for my glory, I learned more about our foes. Magistrix Vox used Daedric magic to split the seams of the wards around the High Chapel. Then she opened an Oblivion Gate to fill the temple with Daedra. You need to get into the High Chapel. Vox managed to bypass the defenses, but its wards are still in place, drawing on the full power of the Tribunal. We must get you past those wards. Without the blessing of each of the three, no mortal may pass through the wards and enter the High Chapel. You have more than proven yourself to me. You have my blessing already. Go to the cloisters of Vivec and Sothasil. My companion gods are absent, but they left trials I can activate to grant their blessings. Pass the trials, and you will be blessed. Sotha Seal values intelligence and ingenuity. He builds, he maintains, he is the master of his creations. He shall test these qualities in you. Sotha Seal has devised a test that allows him to learn more about you each time you complete it. You are to repair one of his clockwork toys and then break it. All gears turn like the hurling disc. All artifice is ephemeral and at times Parts are of more use than the whole. There, divine wisdom. Does that satisfy you?
surpassed the Arbiter's trap. In doing so, you've revealed yourself to us. You do not fully comprehend. Such is your imperfection. We are the imperfection of Sothaseel, excised from his being, yet never truly apart. We measure the indulgence of inspiration against the necessities of progression. You will never know. You are not Sothaseel. Perfection can never truly be attained. By testing one's constantly degrading mechanism against this unknowable goal, you reveal the imperfections of your own device. Can you accept this necessity? For comprehending the necessity of imperfection, you have earned the blessing of Sotha Seal. measure your clarity of judgment. He saw our blessed people through vexing times. His wisdom reveals the secrets others keep. So shall yours be put to the test. The Vex teachings often take the form of allegories and tales. His lessons are learned by listening and then acting. His challenge exemplifies that approach. You must listen, then act. A temple worker named Varman dueled Belron and Telvani slaying him before witnesses. But Varman was a loyal spy. To incite such discord was against his nature. As Vivek did, speak with Varman. Determine who truly slew the Telvani. My lord Vivek, I bear the most grievous news. Belron and Telvani challenged me to a duel of blood. I regret to say, I won. 
It was a small cut upon the arm, enough to settle the matter, but he fell dead. I was advising Tolnus and Galtzer when the others arrived, Belronan full of anger, Fenila a sneer on her lips, and Morami resigned to what came next. Belronan claimed I'd interfered in his affairs. He insisted I knew what he meant. Of course not. I told him so, but he claimed it a lie and challenged me to a first blood duel. Then everything turned to death. My blade ended his life and directly caused his turmoil. I willingly submit to your judgment, Lord Vivek. Your word is unquestioned. I am here to command. Though my blow caused Belronan's death, it was set in motion by another hand. I will aid you in discovering the source of this duel, if you will it. Your word is unquestioned. Lord Vivek, I was here when Belronin issued his challenge. He would still live if not for Fenila. She stoked the Telvani's rage, urging him not to back away from an insult to his honor. She called herself his friend. Curious way to show it. Fenila lent Belronan her blade before the duel. I insisted Vaman and Belronan swap weapons. You'd think she was Ash Mountain the way she fumed. Lord Vivek, Vaman should be dead on the floor. Belronin wouldn't share the note that Temple Netch sent his way, but assured me its contents were vile. One sworn to the temple, quibbling over coin. You should kill him yourself, my lord. A tragedy, Lord Vivek. Belronin's death in the temple brings great shame to his house. I had thought reasoned words could dissuade him from the duel. Such temper is common to House Telvani, but it's not my place to question their reliability. Fenila's words are incorrect, Lord Vivek. Though she clearly believes them, I haven't contacted Balronan for months, and would never have done so without your direction. Wealth has no meaning next to serving you, my lord. This you know to be true. Lord Vivek, Varman should be dead on the floor. Belronin wouldn't share the note that Temple Netch sent his way, but assured me its contents were vile. One sworn to the temple, quibbling over coin? You should kill him yourself, my lord. Morami sold me poison yesterday. I'd planned to hunt cliff races next week, but decided this was a better way to get rid of vermin, so I poisoned the blade. Belronin should never have traded weapons. Worse, he should never have lost to Varman. Fenila lent Belronan her blade before the duel. 
I insisted Vaman and Belronin swap weapons. You would think she was Ash Mountain the way she fumed. A tragedy, Lord Vivek. Belronin's death in the temple brings great shame to his house. I had thought reasoned words could dissuade him from the duel. Such temper is common to House Telvanni, but it's not my place to question their reliability. Of course I sold her poison. As your keen eye no doubt realized, the writing on Varman's note to Belronin was my own. He sold forbidden relics, so I gave him the tools to shame himself and his house. I'm delighted he took me up on it. I did nothing but provide opportunity for a heretic to destroy himself. The act of dueling anyone within the temple would undo him. It's only fitting the Fetcher did so with the tools I presented, and with such finality. You walked in our skin and wrought our judgment. You exposed the lie at the core of all truth. This may be lost on you. It does not matter. We are echoes of Vivek. Nothing more, all things less. We recall the wisdom of his judgment, which differed from your own. You could not know. You are not Vivek. Both. Neither. We rewarded Fenila for her cunning, yet House Redoran suffered for poisoning a Telvani in another's duel. We flayed Morami for her actions, yet elevated House Hlalu for its actions in exposing a heretic. Can you... Through your wisdom and judgment, you have earned Vivek's favor. Receive our blessing.